Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I freeze a solid steel plate with liquid nitrogen, can I actually punch a hole through it? So we've all seen movies before where somebody freezes a safe or a gel cell or something with liquid nitrogen or something really cold and they can usually break the bars or punch a hole through the metal wall. Well, I wanted to test if that's really the case. And then I'll be talking about what cold temperatures actually does to steel. Does it actually make it weaker or stronger? Okay, so I have some liquid nitrogen here. First, let's test what happens when I hit an iron screw with this. So this is some iron alloy screw with a zinc coating on it. So first to test this, I'm gonna take two screws. I'm gonna hit one that's at room temperature and one that's at liquid nitrogen temperatures and see if there's a difference in the brittleness. So let's put our screw in the liquid nitrogen. Okay, first let's hit this one. And I just broke my cement, but not the screw. Now let's grab the liquid nitrogen screw. Hit it. Oh, <laughs> the head popped off somewhere. So that easily broke. Okay, so you could easily see there was a difference between the two screws. The one that was at room temperature and the one that was at liquid nitrogen temperature were definitely different. I could easily break the colder one. But let's take it a step further and see what if I freeze an entire steel plate. And I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Everybody knows Raid Shadow Legends by now, but did you know it's their second anniversary? One of my favorite things about this game is the awesome graphics in it and also the storyline of it. So as I said, this month is Raid's second year anniversary and the schedule is gonna be packed with amazing events. They've got six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments, and they're launching their first ever clan versus clan tournament to give players a chance to compete directly against another clan. Raid's a huge game already, but their anniversary makes it an even better time to join now if you haven't yet. So if you wanna get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description and you'll get your free epic champion, Jotun. And you'll get 100,000 silver, 50 gems, and three ancient shards. So you can summon ancient champions as soon as you get in the game. All these treasures are waiting for you here. Once you're in, you can find me in the game under the name at the Action Lab. And if you're fast, you can even join my clan. And it's that easy. Just click the link in my description and I'll see you in the game. Or use this QR code that's been shown at the bottom of the screen. And now let's get back to our experiment. So you can see this has already been through a lot. Let's see if I can actually break through it with liquid nitrogen. And the way we're gonna see when this gets to liquid nitrogen temperatures is when we no longer see the Leidenfrost effect. Now the Leidenfrost effect is when we see little beads of liquid nitrogen rolling on top of it. That's because compared to the liquid nitrogen, the steel is so hot that it creates this pocket of gas below it. But as soon as the temperatures get closer together, then it's going to spread out on top of the steel. So you can see in the middle here how it's not rolling around in these little spheres on the side. See on the outside here, it rolls around in bubbles, but here it's sticking to it. So once it starts sticking to it, you know it's at liquid nitrogen temperatures right in the center. So this is right where I'm gonna punch it. Okay, here we go. Got it? Yeah. Okay, one, two. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. <laughs> nope, <laughs> not getting through that. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> okay, I should really have goggles on if you have a hammer. Yeah, I, I'll do this part. <laughs> and even with a hammer, it doesn't work. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so that did not work. I wasn't able to get through the steel with my fist or a hammer. And same thing when I cool down some rebar to liquid nitrogen temperatures and strike it with a hammer, I can't get it to really shatter. Now normally it seems natural to think of things breaking when we get them really cold because we've seen videos of whenever you freeze things, like for example freezing this flower here and then hit it against a table, it just shatters into a million pieces. But the reason things like this shatter is because they have water in them and the water forms ice inside and then the ice can easily break. But that same logic doesn't hold true for why does a metal break easier when you freeze it. Well, the first thing you have to understand is that when you cool steel down, it doesn't actually make it weaker, but it actually makes it stronger. 
So despite what your intuition might tell you, even in the experiment where I hit the screw and it broke, that screw wasn't actually weaker. It was actually stronger than the one at room temperature. Now the thing that keeps a material strong is the ability to be slightly ductile, meaning it can bend a little bit. For example, if I make a graph of the yield strength of 410 stainless steel, you can see that as I start at 50 degrees Celsius, the yield strength is only down here. But as I decrease the temperature to negative 200 degrees Celsius, the yield strength rises to here. And so as I decrease the temperature, the yield strength increases. But the thing is, when you have something that yields at a higher strength, it usually means that it's more brittle. So instead of yielding, it just breaks. So instead of bending, it just breaks in a fracture. So really high strength or hard things usually are pretty brittle. For example, if I just take a diamond, here's a real diamond, and hit it with a hammer, it fractures into a bunch of pieces. So the diamond is very hard, but it's also brittle. The same thing happens with glass. Glass is actually very strong and very hard, but it fractures really easily. So when you lower the strength of the steel, you're actually decreasing the toughness of it, even though you're increasing the strength. Now the brittleness of the steel is completely dependent on the type of steel. It depends on the alloy itself and it also depends on how that alloy was treated. For example, there's a test you can do that measures the hardness and you can measure its impact strength. And if you take three different steels, here's how the impact strength would look at different temperatures. So you can see for some steels, as you decrease the temperature, it just drops down at some specific temperature. And this transition here from high impact strength to low impact strength is called the ductile to brittle transition. And you can see that for some low strength steels, there's an abrupt transition. But then for other low strength steels, like this brown line here, it's not as abrupt. But for some high strength steels, it's lower, the impact strength is lower, and then also there's not as an abrupt transition either. So it completely depends on your steel alloy and it depends on your type of metal altogether, whether you're using steel or not. In general, if your metal is pretty ductile at room temperature, it will probably still be a little ductile even at liquid nitrogen temperatures. So that's why when I tried to break this aluminum bowl that was at liquid nitrogen temperatures, it just bent. Didn't break or even this aluminum beam. Try aluminum. Doesn't break. Okay, here's the frozen gallium. Frozen with liquid nitrogen. Let's see how brittle it is. Whoa. So can liquid nitrogen be used to make metals more brittle? Well, yes and no. It depends on the specific type of metal that you're trying to break. If it's something that's already ductile, it probably won't work very well. If it's a very specific type of steel alloy, you could break it. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.